Okay, to finish off, we have our favourite, what we would normally call Tales from the Dale, which lo normally looks into the past of famous, I say famous, Dale, Leg Waltney Dale legends, and we look at some club cricket stereotypes and people they've experienced in their past. And I've got to say, our version of this with the pro players, Dan, has gone down an absolute tree, and we've had some cracking answers. The best one so far was uh, a call, and I can't remember his name, colleague of Lewis Reese at Derbyshire, when we asked who the, the tease question, which we'll come on to. This guy only ate bread and would gladly take eight bread rolls for his tea and just eat them. And we just found that completely baffling. So it has thrown up some great answers. So no pressure, Dan, but there's, we, need some, we need some crackers from you here. Okay. So club cricket stereotypes, TMS stroke comm commentary edition. First up, which of your colleagues would be most likely to forget their subs? Oh, now, without a doubt, that's Ebony Rainford Brent. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, she still owes me 20 quid. Probably. I mean, she, she even knocked, she knocked on the door in the bubble and said, um, can, I, can I borrow 20 quid in cash? And um, I had no idea why, because we were living in a basically cashless environment. I don't know whether she was doing some sort of magician's trick, trick with it or something. But I've never got that back. Uh, yeah, Eb Ebony definitely wouldn't pay her subs. Um, Vaughny, Vaughny would expect to be paid his his weight in his own subs. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Uh, Angers wouldn't know what subs are. Uh, <laughs> um, Simon Mann. Simon Mann would pay his subs instantly. He would be, yeah, Simon Mann is, is the perfect club man in that respect. But you'd have to pay for it. There'd be, you say, you know, once he's paid his subs, that means he's batting at four and he's bowling 12 overs every match because <laughs> he's paid his subs first up. Your money's worth, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Too you know true. I mean? Yeah, but definitely the one, the one who would forget to pay would be Ebbs. Definitely Excellent. Ebbs. Excellent. Right, next one. We all love somebody who's punctual. However, who would be that person who you're tapping your watch thinking, where are they? Oh, dear. You see, the problem is it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, honestly, I work with some of the most professional people you could wish to meet. I, I bet you were all expecting me to say toughers. I bet. Yeah, they would have been up there on my list, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know what? You could not be further from the truth. Toughers is the first person in. It's terrifying. He's there like you know, nine. Well, it's not the first person. The producer's there first. Yeah. He's he's nuts. He's there at nine eight thirty. You know he's paranoid that why is he going to mess up? He like tests it over and over and over again. So look, stop testing it. It'll blow up. You know, <laughs> toughers is the next one in. I am the one where like we're leaving for the hotel. You know, so the night before we go what time for breakfast and uh, various people say, well I'll be there about seven thirty. Other side seven forty five, and I'm like going. Okay, Surely, like you know, nine thirty. If I finish breakfast at nine thirty, maybe I had it at nine thirty. Finish at ten. It's only twenty minutes, even with bad traffic, half an hour. If I'm not doing the first half hour, and I've only got to be on at eleven, that gives me time, doesn't it? And then I'll like rock in at like ten to eleven. I'll see the rotor, and it's me on at eleven, and it's a panic. So yeah, it's, I'm afraid it's me. It's me. Everyone else is always there. <laughs> okay, I saw it's a fucking nightmare question there. <laughs> <laughs> we knew you'd drag you, we'd drag you into it somewhere, Dan, don't worry about it. bastard. <laughs> I, I, I've, got, I've got to say, it sound, I, we'll refer it back to one of our lot, Dave. It sounds very much like Iqbal. Even when yeah. I was captain, I, when I was captain of cricket teams, my team always arrived before me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not a good no, admission. We have players too. I got them there. Stuff. Well, I, I got them there. Like I rang them. You know, <laughs> got them there in the first place. But, you know, I'd still have to put the bloody flags out. They, they still yeah. haven't done that for themselves. I get there at five to one. Still no frigging flags, and no one have found the bales. But I, I never learned to get there. At, you know, half twelve or noon. Yeah, it's anyway, definitely, definitely good to know some things never change because we have that <laughs> right. same problem. Unfortunately, if they're not, if they're not led to the flags or led to the uh, yeah. roller, then nothing gets done. So and you, get, yeah. you get to the point where you want them to meet at half twelve, so you tell them meet at twelve. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
Well, no, well admitted, Dan. Well done. We got that one out of you. Next one. This is this is one we always tell everybody. This is the Neil Harvey question, in such that this is led by me. Who would be the most likely to fall out with an umpire? Uh, that's Simon that's... Mount. You wouldn't okay. believe that, would you? You wouldn't think butter would melt in his mouth. He he is the most uh, obdurately argumentative. When he's right, he's right. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I say that because a lot of the people I work with are, are ex-cricketers who have played a lot with umpires and they haven't fallen out with them. Yeah. Tuffers, Tuffers did once, but the moment the moment Tuffers does something wrong once, he kind of learns his lesson and then he's like, you know, oh, yeah, sorry, Mr. Umpire. Because <laughs> he's a, he's a, he knows, he, he knew he had to like kind of sucker umpires into giving him LBW decisions, so he would never be like that. Vaughn, was skipper, so he knew how to yeah. play the umpires. Yeah. Um, Boyks, Boyks is, was never really aware, you know, it was just it's, it's just on and off like that. Um, it's Simon Mann is the most um, argumentative. I say argumentative, he's just right all the time. Do you know what I mean? And that's what makes umpires annoyed because you get this thing where the umpire says something and someone goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it would definitely be. Ebbs is another great one. Was Ebbs, what a lot of people don't know about Ebony is that she, I think, still has a two match ban to serve from professional cricket because, in the very last game of professional cricket she played, she was given out um, caught a gully, I think it was, when the ball went through to the, the keeper or something mad. It was, it's, a, it's a really mad, it's a mad incident, but basically. Ebony stood her ground, refused to walk. The umpire had to haul her off the pitch. And she then had a disciplinary and a letter. And it said, right, you know, you're banned for the next two games. As luck would have it, it was her last game of cricket she ever played. So there if she ever comes out of retirement, she's going to wait two games before she plays. So, uh, so Ebony, Ebony and Simon. Ebony and Simon are the two, are the two worst for umpires. Oh, I, d I never knew that about Ebony. So that's a that's a nice little tidbit. That one, yeah, excellent, excellent. Right, going on to the uh, the aforementioned tea question: Which oh. colleague most enjoys their tea break, or lunch See, break, for that matter? It's a, I'm afraid that's a really, really difficult one because I, unfortunately I'm probably going to say me again. <laughs> you can see a pattern developing. You know. <laughs> Late breakfast, long lunch. <laughs> um, because honestly, if I go through them, I, dear old Aggers never gets to have his lunch a lot of the time because he has to do stuff during the lunch break yeah. and then he has to wolf down what's left and it's gone a bit cold. Um, tough as tough as tough as likes his lunch, but not excessively. He likes sleeping more than lunch. Yeah. In, in many in many ways, he sees lunch break as opportunity for a nap. <laughs> um, Vaughan's often got to do links for telly. Uh, Vic Marks is writing the first bit of his piece for The Guardian. Uh, Simon is a vegetarian and just complains about the lunches most of the time because they don't conform to his precise requirements for quinoa and you know, <laughs> I, ideally. Bad. There's so many things about Simon that the listener never gets to know because they just hear him on the radio and they think he sounds like an entirely well balanced normal human being. But <laughs> I love him dearly. He's one of my best friends, but he's 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 uh, he's, he's quite picky. Uh, so, um, Ebony loves her lunch. Ebony does love her lunch. Given the opportunity, she'll tuck in big time. Uh, but I'm the one who probably gets most excited. I mean, at Edgebaston, right during the T20 finals day, this is the best place, it's the best restaurant in England. Edgebaston T20 finals day, you get. Breakfast, you get lunch, you get tea, you get like post tea, you get dinner, you get the lot because you're there all day, you know? Yeah. Because it goes on to the tent. Yeah. And I there, I've had the roast turkey with stuffing and all the trimming, you know, roast potatoes, the lot, and the chicken bolty, and uh, the fish from the fish bar. Oh. It's absolutely unbelievable. Then you go back at four o'clock for the mini pies. They are just. I'm getting hungry now. Oh, it's 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 extraordinary. I'm afraid 
I don't. I sound like a terrible egomaniac, but all your questions are ending up with me. <laughs> and <answering> me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I love the lunch. Uh, the scorer, the scorer loves the lunch because it's the the one time they get to because Andy Zoltz and Ann, or Andrew Sampson, whoever doing it, they have to work so hard. Yeah, they're on mm. the whole time. We do twenty minutes on, hour off. You know, they're on constantly. Yeah, go to the loo or anything like that. Um, so lunch is a moment to decompress the Zoltzman. But I wouldn't say that he particularly relishes the food. But when it comes to food, I can rate, I can rank you all the test grounds in order if you want. Go on. Um, yeah, I was going to say that because Stephen Croft, we asked Stephen Croft this question, uh, and it, I mean, he just 100% said Lords, full stop. There's yeah. never an argument for him. Well, it wouldn't be for him because he gets to eat at the pavilion end. Yeah. We eat, we eat the other end. True. So, in a county championship game, Lords is right down the bottom. But for a test match, it's slightly above middle ranking. Top is Edge Baston, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, Old Trafford has just come on leaps and bounds this year. Old Trafford was terrific. The Lancashire hot pot. I mean, I take my hat off. The oval is always solid, like. There's always there's, there's three different options and they're all decent. Lords for test matches, very good. Sometimes quite imaginative. Sometimes a little bit tricksy. They're a bit too much quinoa for my liking, but you know, <laughs> it's it's okay. Trent Bridge, one of two things. As long as you don't go with the fish, it's always good. They overcook the fish. I just let them know that now. You're listening, Trent Bridge. <laughs> Stop overcooking the fish. Headingly. I'm sorry to say, <coughs> it's not been good. It's not been good for a long time. I'm not telling tales out of school here. It's it's they've not got it right. I don't know what it is that they're doing, but it's not right. I've had a piece of beef there that was like the bottom of a pair of brogues. Oh, it was um, yeah, it, it was not right. But what they do do is they provide bovril in cups, Ooh. so they kind of sorted out on that front. Yeah, and I, and I think I've given you the six main test grounds, haven't I? Yeah. yeah, it does sound very much like our conversations, really. You know, like <laughs> our, our club grounds. Where does the best spread be? Your three pounds. Yeah, kind of trying to balance them all up. Yeah, I mean, I should also point out that we're getting all this for absolutely nothing. So we're not even paying tea money. So for me to even remotely complain is outrageous. That's important. <laughs> it's an important part of your day at the cricket. Like, like just, just like for us, you know, whether yep. you get like a proper bit of cake or it's just, you know, sort of whatever has been thrown together on the morning of the game, it's it's important. You and your bloody cake, Dave. You should come exactly, and work with us. Yeah. Like the, uh, send me your address. I'll give you the leftover cake. That you're <laughs> too far too kind. I'm going to say it, it did form a really big part of our conversation with uh, the guys from Sanderstead Cricket Club when we had them on, um, and it was it was very much part of um, you know club cricket club cricket culture and uh, and what we felt should be part of a cricket team. And uh, Dave was really in his element, you know, discussing what it's he felt important, was the important intrinsic part. Proper, yes, proper cricket team. Yeah, hey, absolutely. Miniature pies, though, I promise you. You need to introduce miniature pies because Lancashire have been doing this at Old Trafford and they've been an eye opener for me. So basically, like if you could you could do that with your hand, like that, right? Inside, just a little bit of fluffy pastry on the top, like not too thick close to the bottom, but a rich gravy, rich gravy with steak inside that is it's a morsel, a mouthful of pure joy. You get that at four o'clock, Jesus Christ, you are just in heaven. Neil, no for 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no to list. whoever's doing teams. Yeah. Making a list. And, and note, if you're watching anyone, not anybody from Yorkshire, you're doing me a disservice as a Yorkshireman. Now, come on, get your act in order. Yeah, you get enough stick this side. Get some Henderson's relish oh, yeah. from Sheffield into some mini pies. There you go. Because as a county, Yorkshire's got some of the best food I've ever eaten. I've had some of my best meals ever in Yorkshire. It's just not happening at Headingley at the minute. Disgraceful. Anyway, enough food. I'm getting really hungry now. Uh, <laughs> just on from breaks in general, and I think you've sort of touched on this, but if there's a rain break, who hates it and who loves it? Almost everybody hates it. Um, we have this kind of like uh, almost game of Russian roulette. And again, Simon Mann's brilliant on this. So Simon 
he can smell rain from a distance, even through a closed glass window, right? Because the basic rule of thumb is that if you're on air on TMS when the rain comes, so you could be 19 minutes into a 20 minute stint. If the rain comes and you're on, you have to keep going until the producer tells you to stop, right? So I've seen Simon, well, let's say it's like 12, 18 and 30 seconds, right? And, or 12, 18. And that's the point at which you, you would normally say to yourself, well, I'll do the next over because we do it in 20 minute blocks. Yeah. So if it goes to 12, 19, your hand over if the over ends. If it's 12, 18, you go, Ooh, got to keep going. If Simon at 12, 18 sniffs a bit of air, that suggests there's water and he's probably sniffed it at about 12 14. he stood up he's got his jacket on and he's got his head on his headphones like that and his finger on the on the button and he will rapidly do the last bit of head out the offside there's no run few more words from bill tuffle and never be daniel norcross <laughs> Straight and he will flee <laughs> and he'll punch the air with glee because he'll know that i've then got a fill for an hour <laughs> So, as a general rule, um, we don't like rain. We don't like rain for all sorts of reasons, because once rain happens, it also means that the game's going to go on until 7.30, and much as we love our jobs, we also like to eat at a sort of reasonable time and have a drink, go to bed, you know, because it's, it's quite tiring, actually. Mm, yeah. it's, it's, it, you do get quite knackered doing it, and uh, you've got to do it again the next day. Um, Tuffers. He doesn't mind a, a rain break as long as he doesn't have to do any work in it because he would just go straight to sleep. That's it. He'll see it as an opportunity for a nap. No trouble at all. I've seen him nap underneath tables. He loves the Aegeus Bowl because we do it from a hotel room there. Yeah. And they, yeah. they leave us a bed. <laughs> in the room. I mean, it's he's in his element there. Um, I, I don't mind a rain break because I quite like it. To wibble about different things because you know cricket commentary is great fun but getting the opportunity to chat about something utterly random is quite yeah. good fun aggers is good in a rain break you know uh, but the, the general rule of thumb i think is that rain is the enemy of a cricket commentator because it ruins all of your rhythms you yeah. get a rotor you know what you're doing the producer hates rain more than anything else because then they've got to change the rope to find things for us to do. Uh, and we don't really do much of a rain break except wander around going, has it nearly stopped yet? <laughs> when are we going to get back on? Who's, yeah. oh God, who's going to do the bit at the end? Who's doing the podcast at the end of the day? You know, <laughs> who's got, whose car's here? Can you, can you give us a lift? If it's, you know, it's, 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 there's a lot of that. It's yeah. very, very irritating, right? <laughs> I think yeah, let's, we could just say the same about cricketers in general, couldn't we? Let's be honest. It's uh, you know well, the only the people who like it are the players. <laughs> yeah, as, as yeah, we yeah. all know, there's one thing that professional cricketers hate doing is playing cricket. They love a bit of rain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I say that, I think that is very much the disconnect between the international cricketer and the club cricketer because you know, like you say, they 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 don't mind that break, whereas we've saved up all week to try and get that game in and uh, and ultimately the rain can be the one thing that spoils your weekend so uh, yeah it's uh, that is def definitely the disconnect sometimes what i'd say to you there neil though is remember when you were at school and they did like fire alarm yes and, and it would it would happen before you had to do a maths test and it meant that it screwed up all the teachers plans to make your life hell you loved it didn't you you loved yeah. anything that wasted a bit of time you loved it when it snowed and you couldn't get into school. You loved you loved anything that's you know, at, at work when we had snow day down in London and none of us could get in on the tube. Everyone was happy. Yeah. So remember that you know cricketer is a working man Absolutely. or woman. And if yeah. they get time off from their work, then <laughs> fair play to them. No, hundred <laughs> percent. Couldn't agree more on that one. We're going to end on a fun one, and and I can imagine this might be quite a few people. Which commentator would be most likely to start laughing on mic? <laughs> yeah, well, where do you start? Um, right, so, I mean, the most infectious giggle is probably Ebbs. Right, when she starts, it's a nightmare. 
uh, Alex Hartley, who's come to join recently, done a fair bit of women's games. Yeah. And T20. She uh, she accidentally, I'm sure it's accidental, does innuendos, and then it all goes horribly wrong. I said, I think I said something to her once about how, how hard it was to get it in, and and that just, it, 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 I was changing her microphone, and she went, and she just lost it. And once she loses it, you you lose it, you just because it's impossible. Um, Vic Marks has this wonderful giggle that you can set him off. Mostly when I'm trying to reach for the end of a metaphor, because I often have like very long metaphors that I don't know where they're going when I start. <laughs> and he just starts laughing before I've reached the end, which ruins, I, I can never get to the end of it. Because he's, he, he distracts me. But I think the person who laughs most readily is Tuffers, isn't he? I mean, Tuffers, Tuffers hears innuendo where, where you didn't realise it was there. And so you yeah. just said something. Yeah. And you look and you to the right, right, and he's just in pieces, and his face has gone puce. <laughs> and he's like reaching like a, like, a, like a drowning man trying to reach the edge of a swimming pool, trying to find the off button on his, on his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. And yeah, he's, he's a massive, massive giggler. Um, he, he giggled once so heavily and I hadn't really said anything particularly funny I didn't think but it had touched a nerve for him and uh, I, I ended up actually in that bit of conversation with my, my head stuck in his lap because I've got my, my, my headphone cable or wrapped around something else and I was trying to commentate with one eye looking over the desk with my head in his groin and he was pissing himself laughing. It was um, uh, when I listened back to it, it still sounded vaguely professional. I still had to get out something like you know, Wahab Riaz in left arm over the wicket. <laughs> <laughs> but inside the box was total mayhem. Um, but yeah, I think Tuffers ultimately is is the ultimate giggler, and his and his giggling is the most um, it's the mo it's the most likely to turn into. A leg over moment because he's yeah is he you know the people who laugh they go ah! <laughs> like that he, he does that and then you you just get caught up in it he's wonderful to work with he's, he's a most fantastically congenial superb bloke to work with but yeah big laugher i, I think for me just full, full stop he does it? yeah exactly what i was just gonna say dave yeah oh I mean, he is yeah, he's, 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 he, is, he is extraordinary. But they all are, to be honest with you. I mean, every, every, everyone's great fun. Um, I'm not just saying it. It's, it's an extraordinary environment to work in, where you go to work and you relish it every day because you yeah. know you're going to end up laughing either on air or off air or, or both. I think for me, that that is one of the key things that I always sort of uh, can't believe sometimes about the commentary team is that just how many times you probably could break into laughter and it get quite unprofessional quite quickly and how you manage to rein it back and, and keep that professional level of commentary going out. That, that's the one thing that never fails to amaze me, especially when you, as I say, when you hear Tuffers breaking out and how whoever's with him at any given time can actually maintain that level of seriousness is just beyond me, to be honest. But uh, Well, what we do is, I'll tell you what we do, is, it's, it's because Agus tells an incredible story about the leg over and he says yeah. that at the end of that, um, while it all sounded brilliant on air, Jonas and he were devastated by it because they yeah. thought they'd let the listeners down um, because they hadn't heard it. And they both went home that night really sort of anxious and disappointed with themselves. And then they came back the next day and Radio 4 was playing it on the Today programme and, and they both sort of went, oh, I, think, I think we got away with it. Right. Got away with it. They produced the greatest moment, yeah. one of the greatest moments in radio history. But um, it's a salutary lesson for us all that you know people tune in to hear what's happening in the cricket. <laughs> and yeah. If if we're pissing ourselves off too much that we can't actually tell you that X has got out at a really crucial moment, then we're not we're not doing our job. So uh, yeah, you you've got a producer there as well, who's Adam Mountford, who's very very good. He encourages. Uh, playfulness, but at the same time, 
he makes absolutely sure that you know you know I make him sound rather stern now, but he can be quite stern, I suppose. But but you don't need really those. It. But it just reminds you of your responsibility to yeah. the listener, and uh, and then you have to you have to switch on, and then you come off there, and you go into another room, and you just laugh your head off. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The big release, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's everything done, Darren. Ma- again, massive thanks for joining us. I think. Dave will echo my sentiments in, in such that the commentary team and the, the commentary team from, as you touched on earlier, Dan, Sky and, and BBC have both done an absolute sterling job this summer. Oh, yeah. um, I think, you know, we, we've spoken about clubs and leagues doing a sterling job getting cricket on, but ultimately uh, the professional game is what we all look up to and, and, and keeping some element of that and keeping us entertained with that and not just the players but yourselves have been, done a sterling job in, in very difficult times so uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, we were really looking forward to having you on and, and seeing a different aspect to cricket than we've had previously so thanks very much for joining us really appreciate it well, Neil, well, thanks, thank you so much for the support that you all give us when we do it because you know when you are doing uh, commentary and you're doing broadcasting uh, without the listeners and without the people tuning in, it's, it's, it's sort of vaguely pointless. So it's it's kind of lovely to get the support. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was a difficult summer um, for everyone concerned. But you know, we we had the, the best seat in the house to watch yeah. it, and we had a great time bringing it to you. And I'm I'm so pleased that it, it came across that way. Thanks, Harris. One one last thing. Uh, I, I, this is really trite. I'm sorry, Neil, but your name's Neil Harvey. Yes. Um, what what is your batting average? Just just I just I've just been dying to know because Neil Harvey is one of my favourite Aussie cricketers. It's not as good as Neil Harvey's. I think he's the best thing I can put. Yeah, it's um, it's it's, it's not great, Dave, is it? I mean, I, I I profess to be a number four batsman without a number four batsman's ability or statistics, basically. You're, pro- you're probably average number four. Yeah, I think that's probably about right to be quite frank, especially yeah. these last two seasons. Were you named after Neil Harvey? I was. It, I, it was. It was either Neil Harvey or was it Paul Harvey, the ex Leeds goalkeeper of the seventies? Yes. Yeah, and since my dad and, and myself now are Sheffield Wednesday fans, that was never going to happen. So it only really <laughs> left Neil Harvey as a sporting option. So yeah, that's where it came from. Well, it's a very, very noble name, Neil. Well, well done. Um, you carry it off with great <laughs> elan. <laughs> The number of times I got asked that by umpires. <laughs> you know your name's Neil Harvey, yeah. no, really? <laughs> you, you don't say. It's not, it's just not uh, to. I yeah. did hesitate to ask because I thought... <laughs> you, <yeah. laughs> and on that note, I, mean, I, can't, I can't end better than that, Dan. You really light me up really well there. Dave, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for co-hosting. Cheers. And do your usual, Jeremy Baxter. Yeah, cheers, cheers, guys. And Dan, pleasure. thanks again. And... Uh, and hopefully everyone will see you again soon and we're going to try and get some more pro players on and uh, and carry this on through the winter to, to keep everybody's cricket up and uh, keep you a little bit of cricket going during the dark darker hours. So, uh, Dan, thanks again. Thanks, Dan. Dave, thanks again. And, uh, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching up the Dale. See you soon.